Hi there, Dan Williams here again with some more photo tips for you to take better people photography. I'm only going to do two tips on this video this time. First tip will be dealing with your horizons and keeping your photos level. Second tip will be talking about how your ISO or speed settings on your camera can help make a better picture and eliminate camera shake and camera blur. So let's get to our two tips. Our first photo tip has to do with horizons and keeping your photos fairly level, as nice as level as you possibly can. Otherwise your photos look skewed and they're kind of hard to look at. So as I pointed out in the last video, some DSLR, some cell phones and point and shoots have a grid view function that you can put up so that you've got lines to work with for uh, leveling your horizon. Okay. Some DSLR cameras have a grid setting as well. Mine does, but only during live view settings, which is a special functionality where you can look through the back of the viewfinder to take the picture. But what if you don't have either one of those? Inside your DSLR, in the viewfinder when you're looking, are these little focal points, they're called focus points, and that's how your camera focuses on the subject. But the beauty of these are, is they're level straight across the viewfinder. So in a pinch, you can use those as a bit of a guide as to how to level your photographs. If you're out shooting and you take a tripod with you, a tripod is a very easy way to make sure your horizons are level because mostly all tripods have up near the base of the, the head where it attaches to the legs, there usually is a leveling bubble. Check that, readjust your legs, you're guaranteed a nice level horizon photograph. So in an effort to keep your photos nice and level, uh, it does take a bit of practice, but what if you're at a place where there's no visible horizon? Well, you don't necessarily have to worry about it quite as much, but what can also be helpful is finding something that's vertical to use as a landmark to go perpendicular to. So trees, light poles, building edges, that sort of thing. Use those as a helpful guide, and that way you can keep your photos nice and level as well. If you don't, you'll see sometimes in the background things are off kilter or your light pole is leaning or the corner of the building is going that way. You'll know at that point if your photo is not level. Reset up, take another picture. I think you'll find the results will be much better. When taking pictures where there is a great deal of horizon, this becomes a challenge. I went down to Fort Point to take some pictures of the horizon and I found myself challenged because of the way the land looked on each side of the photograph it was difficult to make a nice level picture. I used my focal points as much as I could. I didn't have my tripod with me for that particular shot. But when I looked at it back at my house, I realized I had to level it a little bit in my photo editing software. It does happen. But do the best you can and practice. It becomes much more noticeable when you've got, say, a group of people standing in front of an obvious horizon and it's not leveled. It does take away from the photograph. So keep trying. Do the best you can. Another key element to look at when photographing horizons is remembering your rule of thirds and trying to avoid something called splitting the horizon. That's where you put your horizon dead center across the frame. A stronger way of doing a photograph is either putting it closer down to the lower third or up further to the upper third. And the reason we do that is because when we split the horizon, we're not sure what the emphasis of the photograph is we're trying to communicate to the viewer. Is the emphasis more on the sky? Is the emphasis more down below? So I shot three photos to give you a quick example of this. This first photograph shows the horizon dead center. Again, we're not sure what I'm trying to show you, what's important that you want to, to see. So then the next one, I put the horizon up further, which made the emphasis more on the ocean than it did on the sky. Then I changed it and shot another one with the horizon down lower which meant now um, I was focusing more on the sky and less on the ocean. So remember, try to avoid splitting your horizon makes a more interesting picture to emphasize one or the other. Our next tip has to do with using your ISO or speed settings. These can be your best friend, especially when taking photos in lower light. So let's say you want to take pictures of your friends in a lower light situation and you don't want to use your flash. This is where your ISO speed settings come in handy. You reset these, you have a greater chance of eliminating camera shake and camera blur on your pictures by using your ISO settings. That's our next tip. Let's get into it and explain what I mean by ISO and how to change those settings. 
So what exactly is ISO? Quite simply, it means the sensitivity of the sensor to available light. The smaller the number, the less sensitivity to light. The greater the number, the greater sensitivity to light. So in the situations with ISO, which you see on your camera settings, ISO 100, less sensitive, you would use that for, say, outdoors, bright sunlight. 1600, for example, would be more in the shadows and interiors. The ISO works in conjunction with the aperture and the shutter speed to make sure you get a properly exposed photograph. What we're going to do now is I'm going to touch briefly on the aperture and the shutter, how that works in conjunction with ISO so that we can get those better pictures and eliminate the camera blur and camera shake. So the aperture is the opening inside the lens that allows the light to come in to the camera. It opens and closes from the controls in the camera, controlling how much light comes into the camera to hit the sensor. Also, on the back of the camera, behind where the mirror flips up and down, is a shutter. That opens and closes at a certain rate to allow the light in to hit the sensor. These two things work in conjunction with the ISO to ensure that you get a properly exposed photograph. When you're changing your ISO settings, it's automatically going to change something else on the camera. If you set the camera to run at aperture priority, that is, the aperture stays open and stays consistently open, when you change your ISO, the shutter is going to readjust. It's either going to readjust in one of two ways. It's going to get faster, which means it'll snap open and close faster, meaning less camera shake, less camera blur, or it's going to open and close slower which means there's a greater chance of camera shake and blur. Next, I'm going to show you the settings on the camera to show you exactly what I mean when it says it changes those settings around. So before I show you a quick example of how ISO settings can change the shutter speed, I want to reiterate that the shutter speed settings are in kind of a fraction. So one 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 thirtieth of a second is going to be a slower shutter speed than say one one twenty fifth of a second, just to let you know. So when you see the graphics come up on the shot, you'll see what I mean when I talk to you about how the shutter speed will change when the ISO changes. So right now I'm going to set my uh, lens at 18 millimeter, which is as wide as it can get. I'm going to keep the aperture on 3.5. I'm going to change my ISO to 100. And then I'm going to depress the shutter halfway down and I get a relatively okay shutter speed. But we're going to try this again. I'm going to bump it to 400 ISO, depress the shutter halfway down. Now it's faster. One more time to show you what I mean. Now up to 1600 ISO, I depress my shutter halfway down. Now it's quite fast. And the reason I'm showing you this is because when we do some actual photographs, you'll see that the ISO changing changes the shutter speed, which means it's a greater chance of, again, we're trying to eliminate camera shake and camera blur. My daughter Georgia has agreed to sit in for a couple photos demonstrating how changing your ISO setting changes the shutter, therefore changes how the camera shake and blur happens. So after supper, we went into the living room and I shot a series of photos where I changed the ISOs. Let's go into those photos right now to show you what I mean. First one I shot at 100 ISO, the second I shot at 400 ISO, and the third one we'll look at is the one that came out at 1600 ISO. So we look at our very, very first one that I shot. I happen to have an aperture of 4.5 ISO at 100. The shutter speed ended up being two seconds long, and as you can see by looking at the photograph, she's a bit blurred and her hand is a little blurred. So what happens now when we change the ISO? Let's go on to the second pick. So the next photo we'll look at is the one that I shot at ISO 400. And again, the aperture stayed at 4.5. The shutter switched down to half a second versus two seconds, which means that the hand is frozen a little bit more. It's not as blurry as in the first one. So now let's look at our third shot, which came in at ISO 1600. At ISO 1600, the aperture is still 4.5. Now the shutter speed, one-eighth of a second, even faster. As you can see, the hand blur less than when we shot the 100 ISO. Let's take a quick look at those three photos back-to-back -back so that you can see the differences. First of all, ISO 100, then ISO 400, then ISO 1600. 
Now you can see by setting the ISO how the shutter speed changes. Changing the ISO, change the shutter speed, change the motion, which translate to when you're holding the camera, a less chance of camera shake and camera blur. Point and shoot cameras should also be able to do the same thing. Experiment, see if you can switch your ISO settings on other kinds of cameras, which means that camera as well could take sharper pictures and less of a chance of movement and shaking. This also works really well in lower light situations, not just indoors, but maybe outside. Maybe you're in the woods and the light is not very good, or you're someplace where the shadows are very deep and very dark. Change your ISO settings to give you that chance of a better, steadier picture. Okay, time for a brief recap on the two tips. Tip number one, keep your horizons nice and level. This takes practice. You may try a tripod, which is a leveling bubble to help you with that. You can also use the focal points within the camera viewfinder as a guide. You can also use a grid function if it comes up in your cell phone or your smartphone or even in your point and shoot. Use the grid to help find your horizons. If you're in a place where the horizons are not really, really noticeable, try looking for vertical landmarks and things that you could use to level perpendicular. So edges of buildings or light poles or trees or something you know is straight up and down, that can also work as a guide for making sure your horizons are nice and level. Photo tip recap two, your ISO setting is your friend. Remember, resetting your ISO means your shutter speed will reset. And when your shutter speed is set higher, you've got less of a chance of camera shake and camera blur that's happening when you're taking a picture. Your ISO settings are simply the sensitivity of light of your sensor in your camera. The lower the number, the less sensitive. The higher number, the better the sensitivity to light. You can change your ISO settings for all sorts of situations. It's great for gloomy places, dark overcast places, deep dark shadows. Feel free to experiment with your ISO settings. Shoot in different ways with those different settings. But remember, the end result of all of this is still taking great people pictures with less camera blur and less camera shake. Well, that concludes another photo tip video from me, Dan Williams. I want to thank you for tuning in and watching this. We covered two tips today, keeping your horizons nice and steady, and your ISO settings are very helpful for eliminating camera shake and camera blur. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you are enjoying your photo journey. Keep taking pictures and keep having fun.